I'm hoping that is my channel that's live. I'm about to go see right now. Because otherwise, why, this. And why I was talking about we got three strikes already. <laughs> no, that's the name of my um oh. my uh my uh Google account. Cause that's my that was my old podcast name. It was a dating podcast, so it was called Three Strikes Podcast. Cause niggas, you got three strikes. You fucking right. three different times. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Girl, let me tell you about a pregnancy craving I was having today. Why was I sitting there eating? Spicy Doritos, spicy chili Doritos with coleslaw. <laughs> Dipping it in fucking coleslaw. Here go the pregnancy cravings again. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to... And say I'm live now. Now, how do I make sure it's on YouTube? Okay, they say the event is already on there. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, we live right now. Okay. Okay, cool. So we are live, live, live. Okay, well, hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Manifesting with Karmic Sight Gal. My name is Shakayla, and this is my friend, my soul sister, one of my soul mates, Hi. the divine goddess, eternal <laughs> consciousness, Aurora. Or you can, I tagged her below in the description box, but you can find her channel at The Row Effect. You can just click it, it's literally a link. Click it and go subscribe to her right now. Thank you. Um, bro, do you? I talk about her all the time, literally every week on the channel. I'm like, bro, uh, my friend, bro. I was just talking to Ro. So, y'all probably feel like y'all already know her, but if you don't, you want to give them a little introduction, okay? Um, this always is so awkward for me. <laughs> what do I say? Like, I don't know. I think I am, I'm everything all in one, and I like to be off radar. But for the most part, I like to help people and give guidance. So I do a little bit of what karmic sight gal does, but just like in my own state or region. You know? Yeah. Worldwide would it though for real though. Hey, Let's for real. Off our blessings now. Yeah. Um, well, if you guys are like Longtime subscribers of my channel, do you know that I have a series? You can look in the playlist and they say token talk. And this is all my 420 content. I usually just like roll up and talk about something that is spiritual or related to spiritual. So today, me and Ro is gonna be dropping a channel message on y'all. Yes. Um, and it's gonna go wherever it goes. So um, I guess I'm gonna start the reading just talking a little bit about well i mean no the first thing we should do is is light up that's the first thing because okay. i gotta turn this light out because what the heck y'all don't even look at what i'm smoking because um I, I usually do joints now, and something told me yesterday to buy a, a pack of Duchess. And I stopped smoking Duchess, one, because they was, like, going out of business or something like that. So packs used to be bad. But, like, yeah, it was crunchy and everything we, soon as I unrolled it. We smoke games over here. <laughs> yeah, that's what Bianca smoked, too. I tried the game once or twice, and it, I wasn't a fan. I thought the flavors was cool, but I wasn't a fan of the texture or the taste of it. Yeah, like, and I'm over here flexing y'all because I literally don't smoke out of that shit. Okay, somebody <laughs> made that for me. And it's just been sitting here. Somebody said I'm rolling up a spliff. So I am literally stuffing weed in my black amount that is empty. I <laughs> gutted it out and I'm just sticking all my... Yeah. I wonder, can we like... Is there a way to see comments? You know, I will get ADHD, so you just talk to me about the comments that stand out to you. I'm not going to pay attention to it. Okay, I'm going to open it up and... Um, oh, Lord. 
we'll I'm gonna open up YouTube and then try and like like I mean Shay just random just for the sake what's your favorite like liquor like do you like tequilas do you like whiskeys vodka yeah y'all know i used to be like a dad like that i'm not even joking i used to be an alcoholic for real so i've had a journey through different types of alcohols i would mm -hmm. say that if i had to choose now it would be tequila for sure because it mm -hmm. it um it agrees with me versus other stuff. Like when I first started drinking, I probably was drinking like Hennessy and vodka and like that stuff. First of all, I like to enjoy my drink. Um, mm -hmm. like, like mm, <laughs> about to die and shit while I'm drinking it. So I feel like tequila is the smoothest. It's the, it doesn't give me as much of a reaction like um in my gut as other stuff. Mm -hmm. What about you? What you like? Girl, I love me some whiskey. whiskey. I only say that. Yes, because right now I'm drinking Crown Royal Apple. Wow. You know, I've never um I've never been a whiskey drinker before. I mean, yeah. I've heard it before, but I've never got into it. It's a I'm not a dark liquor girl. Yeah. Well, you know, they say dark skinned people what? drink dark liquor. <laughs> Okay, so that's what I did. I opened it up on YouTube and muted it so I could look at the comments. Right now we don't have none, but um, okay, so I didn't tell you what happened when me and Cherry went to the dispensary. No, what happened? So this was the first time we went in this place. Like, you know, it's legal here in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can go there to just shop. But first of all, the prices I feel like are double than what you would pay for an eighth if you just went to your homeboy and purchased it. Right. And I don't have no homeboys here. The one person I knew that could sell me weed was Sharonda, and she moved to Ohio. So right. I'm out of luck. We go in there. First, they real nice to us or whatever, like the security. They check your ID before you can come into the thing. And then we walk into the place and... Um, I was like started recording content because you know we post content every week when we do something we have a segment called BBLU which stand for like bad bitches link up so we was going to record content and first I recorded a little content nobody was like really watching me and when I lifted my phone up to like record the room this dude got all crazy with me and was like hey you can't record in here now mind you when I walked inside I looked on the doors and they had a couple messages posted it but nothing said about no recording inside right so it was no reason for him to be getting all rowdy with me like that like chill so right. that already rubbed me the wrong way and then it was like, we kind of was trying to look around and see what was good. And they was rushing me to hurry up and come shop. Like, I can help you over here. Come over here. Like, I can help you over here. Like, I don't like being rushed. That's the first yeah. thing. I was just trying to see like what the vibe is, what y'all got going on. Yeah. So then I went to the bud tender and the guy that we got, I'm going to be honest, he wasn't really like um, knowledgeable. He seemed like he might have been new or something, which that's cool. He can ask for help from his coworkers. That's good. So then we end up buying stuff. I spent at least thirty more dollars than I planned on spending for an eighth and ten edibles. Wow. That had me blew the wrong way. Like when we went to the dispensary in Chicago, I probably spent fifty more dollars and I got three more things. Mm. Like I would have got three things at that other place versus the two things that I got. Right. So that kind of had me blue. And then they was mad rude in there. Like they were staring at us. I heard the employees having a side conversation about me recording in there, which is like, how am I supposed to know that I can't record in here? Because right. that other place let me record. They was open to it. They want people to share them on social media and stuff, you know? Right. So that had me fucked up. And I was really irritated about that. Yeah. I'm like, first of all, why are you getting the attitude? Because I'm so nice to people. Like, yeah. I can be a mean bitch, but generally, I'm just, like, so nice to people. So, when people be coming at me with an attitude, I don't be understanding what it's all that for. Right. God. Yeah. This thing is so ugly. 
Okay, well, I'll tell you guys about the flame reading. So you guys know sometimes I like to go ahead and read the flame. So when I was um cleaning my cards or whatever in my energy, let me look at my notes. I had to write notes because y'all know my memory. <laughs> Do you feel like that if you don't write it down at the beginning? Yes, that's what my inner voice was telling me. That's why I told you I had to write those two things that came to me because I I'm not going to remember. Sad to say. This book, all of my eyes. Okay. I love these little red cups. It's so cute. <laughs> it just makes you feel real cute because it's so cute. <laughs> shot for Scorpio season. Take a shot for me. I hate that I'm singing Drake right now. All right. Are we in tune or no? We in tune. We just doing okay. our thing that we do. Yeah. And do you have our deck with you? No, but I was hoping you had it. Okay. I definitely got it. I feel like you was going to have it, so I brought some other decks. Okay. Come on. What decks right. did you bring? I want you to use the deck. I've been using it. Okay. Cool. Um, you y'all know I say this every time I use the deck that this is the deck that me and Ro created together. But she <laughs> is literally the alchemist of this deck. She created all this stuff in her mind, and then she was like, "Put it on the paper for me." And we yeah. created this, and it is so dope. Um, the best decks, right? Yep. Our first of many. Um, so the Palo Santo, the first thing is that the flame was like only on the left side, which y'all know is the feminine side. That's the feminine energy. But what I was picking up based off on that is that there's an imbalance in energy. So the people who are in the feminine energy, they need to lean towards the masculine and the people who are in their masculine energy need to move towards their feminine energy and like just start to kind of understand why they feel the need to be so feminine or so masculine, vice versa. Um, we put up this clip the other day. This actually was a while ago, but somebody put a comment on the clip the other day. And she was saying, basically, I was saying how it's grooming and stuff that with the fact that we shave all of our body hair, like, all of that stuff is just so we can look more childlike and everything. And then this girl commented, she said, like, it's nothing wrong with wanting to, you know, groom yourself and take care of yourself and have hygiene. And it was like, girl, we're not talking about hygiene. We're talking about brainwashing. Right. If you prefer something, sometimes you prefer it and it don't have nothing to do with who you are for real is the indoctrination. They told us this feels good to you or you like it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't comment back on her because <laughs> when somebody is already in a mind state and they believe something so true to their core, it's no point in even having a conversation with them about it because they want to have an argument. And right now where me and Roe is in our journeys, we like, we're not reaching back to help nobody that's not on the same level as Ascension with us. You mm -hmm. got to be able to get the message the first time. I can't go back and forth with you trying to explain to you why us not being okay in our natural state, which is however our hair grow on our heads or on our bodies. And you saying, but I like that. It's okay if you like it. I'm not telling you not to like it. I'm not telling you liking it is wrong. I'm telling you that where's what it's rooted in and it's brainwashing. But they don't even have nothing to do with it. But yeah. this, I'm just saying that's something like feminine. So that's like feminine hygiene. Part of that is like shaving or waxing or whatever. You know, so I'm not saying change your ways. All I'm saying is maybe think about it a little bit and try and digest. Like, why? Why do I like this? Do I really like it? Does it feel like a chore to me every time I have to do that shit? Or is it something that I genuinely take pleasure in? That's how you know the difference of am I brainwashed or this something that I just really fuck with on a spiritual level? What you think about that? I definitely agree. Okay. 
Do you have it one way or another? I used to be one of those girls, like I'm a body waxer. I wa I do that for a living and I haven't waxed my vajage in a minute, a hot minute, y'all. And I just don't feel the need to because I'm starting to just like myself. I like it there. Okay, so I definitely, I've just been a shaver mm -hmm. all my damn life. So you so I in tune, to, sister. Huh? I said you so in tune. Yes, I just always shaved and I'm just hairy, like naturally hairy. So for me, I kind of like that clean. And not to say that it's unclean to have mm -hmm. hair, but for me, it's just like, you know, it's just like a little look. Like it's it's a look. I feel um, you. But I do it for me, most importantly. Like, I just, that's like a part of my self-care routine. When I shave my legs, I shave everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. I tried using Nair, girl. I had such a bad experience with Nair. Everybody got a Nair story. And I really want to just talk about the fact that do Black people, is this just a Black thing that we put the Nair on our hoo-hahs? Or am I the only one that do that? No, it's not a black thing either. It's a okay. thing of we know this stuff work. Okay, so I'm going to try it. And some of them say it's okay for the area. Honestly, it's just user mistakes. We don't be fully yeah. reading directions. We think that just because we could put it on our legs for this amount of time does not mean that those other areas aren't more sensitive. Okay. So what we really should be doing is like a, a, a what do they call it? A patch test. Put the nair on a Q-tip and put it on a small area and see how you react. See, like, how many minutes you need to leave it on. Test it in a couple of spots before you go full on everywhere. Yeah. And then we always end up with chemical burns. Like, everybody yes. has a nair story. And it, it yeah. sounds so embarrassing until you share with one of your homegirls and she'd be like, girl, that happened to me, too. Yeah. I know. I've heard so many stories. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like that is a thing for me. I don't know where it comes from to shave and have hella horror stories. I got shamed into shaving. Really? Yeah. It's one of those things that when I actually thought about it, I realized it was something that I was brainwashed into thinking it was more clean. Um, like I grew up in a household where it was extremely religious, so they didn't talk about a lot of stuff like personal hygiene being on your period we we didn't talk about like um shaving body hair or whatever like i think one of my grandma she had brought it up to me before but she didn't tell me how to do it she didn't give me the tools to do it nothing i didn't know and um when i went to boot camp i was 17 years old and me and my best friend went on a buddy plan we went together and when you are in the navy at least you in boot camp you don't get a personal shower. There's not a one person shower. There's a whole bathroom, a room of showers. There's no stalls in between them. There's literally one shower head hanging down from the ceiling, two of them in one room. And y'all have to crowd around in a circle and wash up at the same damn time. So if you ain't never even seen another girl naked for the first time, you're like, wow. Wow. It's like an eye-opening experience. And then other people are seeing you naked, so they're judging your body. And my best friend was like, girl, why is your pussy so hairy? <laughs> and I was like, I'm, that's how it is. Isn't yours hairy? I was like completely oblivious. Like I was a like I was one of those people that grew up in a freaking cult or something. It was like yeah. I had no clue that you were supposed to do something with it. And yeah. it was so funny because she told me to to shave it but i still didn't do it and at that time i hadn't yet had sex before so okay. the person that i ended up losing my virginity to was a mutual friend of me and my best friends and he literally said to her like why is her shit so hairy wow okay so, <laughs> so, so, so oh my goodness so that, that, from that point, I felt embarrassed about it. I was like, I'm never not shaving this thing again. Wow. Up until like maybe six months ago, I was waxing faithfully. Every four to six weeks, me and Cherry, and we would have a wax day. So how do you feel about it now? You're just done with the waxes? 
Um, it depends on how I'm feeling. I just listen to myself intuitively and I believe in like cycles and stuff. So it's like you might be in a cycle of something for a little bit of time. You OK with it. And then for another bit of time, you'd be like, I would feel really good if I was hairless, you know. So yeah. I just try and listen to my intuition and my own needs and what I feel like doing. Sometimes you wake up and be like, I'm about to shave everything, you know. You feel me? Right. <laughs> and you just so do it. it. Oh, my God. Chat. So why my son, okay, everybody, backstory, I'm a Scorpio, decided to cut my hair on Halloween. My son just cut off his locks last night. And he had the nerve to ask me, are you surprised? I'm like, no. <laughs> he said, what are you surprised about? I was like, I don't know. But like, do you feel a numbness to anything these days, Shay? Like you're not surprised by anything anymore? Yeah, I feel like the more... The, I'm going to say the more that I understand people, the more I can't be surprised about nothing. And I feel like it's mainly of a reflection of the more I understand myself and that I'm a complex individual. I got levels to me, you know what I'm saying? And so does yeah. everybody else. I don't think there's nothing that anybody can do that will surprise me right now. I might be surprised to hear some information. Okay. That, but I um, I think any anything can happen. Okay. So there's a shock factor and you're just open to whatever comes through. <laughs> Sometimes it feels good to be shot. It's like an endorphin hit. Like, mm, okay. That's yeah. news to me. <laughs> I like the thought that counts behind the, the surprise. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody's coming to tell me something, I like the fact they thought about me enough to share that with me. Yeah. And then if someone is surprising me, I love the thought of them just thinking of me and wanting to make a special event surrounded with me. Yeah. So it's like a double edged thing. Yeah, it's definitely a double up. Do you want to share your one of your quotes right now? OK, so for Scorpio season, something that popped up into my mind was a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Um, and I thought that that quote was very significant to the transformation happening in Scorpio season. And mind you guys, we don't have to be just in Scorpio season to go through a transformation, but it's just that you have to realize that uh, in order to, we would say tie up loose ends, you have to make choices and you have to choose a road. You have to choose a path. And sometimes we get stuck at like the fact that there's two paths or more than one in the first place. And it's just like, to be in a space where you can't choose makes you unstable because now you're standing there, you're going crazy, you're not making decisions, you're doing everything else but choosing your path. And I guess the message to me behind that is just like, you know, to choose or to be chosen, <laughs> that is the question. So it's like, what position are you willing to be in right now? Mm -hmm. um, are you sitting there waiting for life to happen for you? Or are you actively thinking about ways to turn your situation around? So the other quote that came was, you can't go in two different directions at the same time. So that's just talking about still that choice, needing to decide what you're going to do. Because trying to have one foot in and be one foot out, it's still chaos in your life because you're still undecided. I don't know. So that that's where I came from with that shit. Yeah. That's so interesting because as you was telling me that, I started like having visions of a channel message I had like a while ago. And I was talking, I had did an Instagram live message and I was saying that I was seeing two doors and one of the doors, it was you know, everything you always wanted, but the only, you had to make certain choices to be able to have access to that door. You know what I'm saying? And the other door, it was like, your choice is, are you going to keep going in the same behaviors and patterns and thoughts and choices that you normally been going? That's not really getting you to where you're trying to go. Wow. Or are you going to go through this other door and consciously choose better decisions and habits and actually actively 
seeking out those things that you say that you want and changing the stuff about yourself that's keeping you from getting those things. Because a lot of it be self-sabotage, you know what I'm saying? It'd be like, do I even deserve this? Was it worth the effort of me putting it in? Am I going to get validation for this? Is there money attached to it? It'd be a lot of stuff going on in our mind. But it's like what you said, then during that time where we're basically in a mind meld, trying to figure out what should I do, nothing's happening. And then wow. three months pass and we say, well, I thought I would have got this by now or I thought I would have seen growth in this area of my life. And then it's like, but you're still in your mind. You're not here in the physical where life is happening. That's why it's so present. I mean, important to just be present all the time. And like whenever you find yourself thinking a whole lot or like you feel incapacitated, you just got to like do something like breathe, move, do something that's going to get you into this moment that you in right now, like be in your body because yeah, you will, that, that cycle of the overthinking girl, tell me about it. I'm, I'm literally there right now. So us having this conversation, I'm telling you all this because I have the information, but it's difficult creating those changes and doing it. Even when you got the information, even me just telling you this and you thinking about it, we all on a journey. And the best thing that you could do, me and Ro was talking about this before we started the call, is to not have guilt about where you are in your journey. Just have acceptance for it. I know who I am. I know I'm a procrastinator. I know that this. And you don't have to really claim those things if you don't want to. You just have to acknowledge that I have these habits and these are the habits that's keeping me from wherever I'm trying to be at. Whether it's just happy, whether it is a certain amount of money or success or whatever you want, whatever you yeah. want, it's us. It ain't nobody else. I mean, shit, there's, there, there's things in the physical that keep you from getting what you want, like fucking racism and all kind of shit. But like a lot of it, we got, it's our power. We are so yeah. powerful. And every day we are creators. Like every day we just out here creating shit just by making simple choices or even choosing to do nothing. Yeah. Still choosing to do nothing is something. <laughs> yeah, we're live. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so this is interesting. I feel like um every conversation moving forward should always feel I'm on live. <laughs> Come here, baby. This is my baby daddy. Look at this. <laughs> ain't, this, ain't this crazy? Yeah. Because, yeah. So you you have to talk to him. Okay, pause. Let me take a pause real quick. Okay, yeah. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to just keep talking. Right. I just brought the party to him. No, look. No, no, no. This is my home. Girl. We doing. She lives in Chicago, and we're doing like our spiritual message live on YouTube. Oh, come on, let me know what I'm doing. Okay. Keep here for a minute. Who upstairs? Marshall, I know that shit. Let me get down. No, so that I think her main concern is just his phone. They, but the doctors are sending. No, it makes sense. She said the doctors are sending some new phone so that he can have that, you know, connection. But yeah, it's just her anxiety. We didn't get it. What who wakes up? Carlos. You gonna sell them? I don't think we should. Bottom bitch. <laughs> you feel me? But um, you know, I almost like now, not even almost, but I'm kind of getting emotional right now because you don't realize that you're living in a manifestation, and it's like you being my soul sister. I just feel so happy right now. Like, yes, yes for real, because like even just a few weeks ago, the growth for you individually and him for y'all to just to be cool like i'm just like so happy for you okay well let's talk about this then since we're on display this is happening and it's naturally evolving which is a very beautiful thing because of course my my heart strings are not so in it to the point that i could be blinded not to mm -hmm. work things out for the betterment of the whole my daughter's father is the person that I'm like still heartbroken that we can't be in this space. And I just want to be honest with, with you because today I was crying mm -hmm. and I had to let go. And I kept telling myself, Aurora, 
you need to let go whatever that hurt is because i guess it's like just like how this is happening naturally and evolving that too will but yeah. i'm just grieving over the fact that that's the one that i really want to be working with and grooving with and on the same page with so it's interesting that you pointed that out so it's like aurora be fucking grateful bitch for what's going on right now no because you are living in the manifestation and all things happen in time and the thing is the acceptance is it is that you don't be ready for that you like you said you still got spaces that you need to heal in order for that to happen and because y'all energies is mirroring each other it's the same damn thing you know we it's are the same thing the carter's dad is like the unfinished business so it makes sense to kind of tie up those loose ends so that we talk about tying up loose ends <laughs> and then we're going to tie some more shoes later on down when we get to that bridge this but is I'm so funny this is funny mm -hmm. but this I'm is so happy. funny to me because it's literally the same thing you know with my kids that i feel like for since we've been back in illinois i've been constantly triggered the first trigger was me going into my home that i picked out and seeing my kids having a family with their dad it was just like it's not Someone even that else. Say dad it just was like Girl, I can't even explain all the feelings all around it because I still haven't totally processed it. But then meantime, still everything is happening. Even though we're being nice and cordial to each other, the energy is there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you know what's crazy? Because right now, like you, like I just visualize, basically spirit is like, do you see how this person, yes, you're technically thinking you're replaced, but they're just with another lesson because the lesson still has to be learned. The lessons still have to be learned. And that's something that you like, it's just in your face, you know what I'm saying? And it's just wow. like, wow. But what makes me feel so good about myself is that like, wow, we really, I really grown past a lot of this stuff. And I can look in this reflection of what my life used to be and what it could have been really still. And I could be like, I'm glad though that I'm not in that place because with I wouldn't have had all this growth had I not ever left. Right. I would have just been still there. And I feel like that's a gift from the universe that I'm just thinking it's like a harsh, like, oh, you have right. to see this and be unhappy. But it's a gift because you should see this and be happy though. And, and what did you tell me the other day? You were saying about not being where you were. And that's a big shift. Now you're on the other side of that. Yeah. What? Literally. Okay, y'all. The message is coming out because we're living in the manifestation. I'm going to change this, the name of this video to living in the manifestation. And what's interesting is the cards so far that I have pulled from the deck that we both created together, bottom of the deck is past life energy. <laughs> so it's funny how we're a uh, trip down memory lane i'm old and look at the card though friend look at the car is literally pictures of like your old memories right? yes you know and it's very nostalgic okay you know what stood out to me when i looked at, at these cards a couple of days ago it was the paris one What's Everybody the number card? Knows. I literally was thinking about Paris like a day ago. Okay, so the number... I was making some um some prints because this another thing is that babies is on my mind, and not for me to have a baby. So many people I know are having babies, and so it's just a lot of baby stuff. Like my ex just had a baby. My baby cousin is pregnant right now. One of Cherry's friends literally just gave birth. Janaeko and Big Sean just announced the birth of their baby today. Oh, um, and and it's a Scorpio. I don't know when the baby was born, but I was thinking in the last two weeks. It so, gotta be a Scorpio. What's up? What's up? She would have a Scorpio son. That is so karmic. She would have a Scorpio son as a Pisces. Stop playing. Um. Oh, and one of the channel numbers, I just got to say it, is 88. And her and Big Sean's group is called 2088. And I got to let you know real quick that the number of this past life card is 35. Mm, we're going to break that down. 
35. Okay, so first of all, 35 as a whole is an eight. And we already been saying this for months. I mean, y'all probably don't know we've been saying this, but we're in the eight energy. We've been in the eight energy for quite some time now. I would say since sometime in the summer, we've been in the eight energy. And eight energy is, it's a web. When I see eight, I see a web in my mind's eye. It's like all these different opportunities that the universe is giving you and they're literally like a spider's web like just connecting in different spots and it's like if you go here you could get here or you could get here or you could have chose to go over here and do this and it's like all these different paths available to us but then the eight energy is also karma okay so that means that the paths that we choose is going to be based off of one, the lessons that we need to learn. That's where the universe is going to direct us. But then the other thing is going to be based off of like our authenticity and us choosing what we really want, our desires, or are we choosing that brainwashing, that like what people told you to be or, or something like that. And then that's how your life comes together is the, is the a energy is, your life story like okay when i'm old and i'm telling my grandkids all these things and then you start to think about all the choices that you could have made or didn't make or did make and how your life changed to be how it is that's like how i'm picking up on on eight today but then when you break down 35 from three and five here we go always back to the inner child <laughs> it, that's right. where it starts you have to like you have to, there's no way into ascension outside of like going back and confronting your past and not to live in that space, but to heal from it. Just to say that you not there anymore, just wow. having acceptance for the past. We be going back into the past for dumb ass shit. Like it's okay to grieve the past. That's going to be healing for you. It's okay to reflect on the past and say, I'm going to choose a different decision, but it's not okay to be in the past and just sit there and wish. That is going to lower your vibration quicker than anything. Like, what do you want right now? Because this is where you are now. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about, let's pause. Let's talk about where we are now, because what I was also thinking about so per our conversation yesterday, when I was telling you like, block, you know, I don't want to do traditional marriage. Um, I want to add to that. And I just don't want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm saying all this to say, like, you know, when you were talking about like, I don't know why I keep hearing, I think that you, I keep hearing you say, what you chose is not like okay what what you're doing or what you've been doing this far is not what you chose it's like you living in someone's reality that's to me what i feel like you've been saying mm -hmm. and so now a lot of us some of us are in this space where it's like we don't want to do some of the things that traditionally we were supposed to do or what society has told us we're supposed to do the cards that i got laid out so we got past life energy as the bottom of the deck. Mm. Girl, look at this. We got this card. 26 out of now, state travel. Wow. Wow. And let's make this correlation. Past life energy is 35, which is the whole number eight. I just got to connect these two cards right now with the past life energy and the out of state travel. Me and Roman talking about this for a few days, but we're literally where we are now is in the future. The reason time is going by like this, because a lot of us, if you are on the same vibration as me and Ro, we've been time traveling like this whole year. We've been literally, if you feel disconnected from your physical reality, if you feel like time is just in a going fast, if you feel like even your growth is happening so quick to the point that you know you're having these lessons happen to you, but they're back to back to back, like you're, the universe is literally ushering us in so fast into to our new reality. And I also want to add to that, you making a correlation with these two cards, you know that this looks like manifest, what you've been trying to get me to watch on Netflix. Yes, it literally looks just like that. And what happened in that show is, if y'all haven't watched Manifest on Netflix, like check this out. 
Um, there's so many messages in this show that either you're going to pick up in them because that message is for you type of thing, or just like, there's a lot of knowledge here, um, on a spiritual way, but they don't even make it seem spiritual at first. What happened is these people get on an airplane to go on vacation to Jamaica or some shit. And then when they come back, the plane was too full, so they had to send some of the passengers back on a different plane. So some of these people decided to go to a different plane. All of the people that decided to go on that other plane, um, they got lost in time. And then the plan lanes five years later, and none of these people have aged. They think the plane landed from I left Jamaica and got to New York and they was about to come home and be with their families and go to work on Monday, but time passed five whole years. Wow. And I just want to let you know, for some fucking odd reason, I can't get into the show, Shay. Like, it's always background music for me. But what I have noticed so far, because I can't sit still, Shay. Mm -hmm. So what I have noticed from starting from the first season is the concept of them getting on this plane, traveling, and all those years going by, them not aging, like you said, but now they got gifts. Okay, but listen, I'm going to have to give a spoiler, <laughs> and you just going to have to fast forward about five okay. minutes if you're really trying to get into this show. But they're just now figuring out in season three that the entire time that they was gone those five years, they was in the divine consciousness. Don't play with me. I feel like the reason that you can't get into the show is because this is not how you receive your messages. Okay. This is how I receive my messages. Most of the ways I receive my messages is through some sort of entertainment because I feel like my ancestors was entertainers. They brought, try and reach me through music. They reach me through TV shows or movies, animals, numbers. It's like something engaging to me. Your ancestors, Ro, I feel like they was like authors and poets and writers and like visionaries and even singers. And so they reach you through music and stuff. But a lot of your messages, they come through you scripting. That's why you write your messages on, on, on all these cards. That's why you write your music. That's why you journal a lot and it's because that's the things that they push you to do so that they can connect with you so you can get your downloads and your channel messages and it's crazy because you as my friend and as my soul sister you know since we've been divinely connected you give me the visual so i feel like whenever you say like whenever we're talking about something and then you'll say something like manifest that's just showing me visually what it is that we're already talking about Mm -hmm. You know, it's just crazy because I just I just feel like when we travel, we're always traveling out of the state of mind that we're in every time we get on the plane. You know, some people be thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm about to go travel to this and this and that. But under if there's an underlining energy behind you simply getting in that plane. Mm -hmm. You have to whatever. Um, On the first car, like the other number was five. Five is the number of change, and it's also the number of flexibility. And people don't realize in order to have change in your life, you have to be flexible. You have to be open. Um, that's why energetically a lot of people lean to like yoga or something, because as they become flexible in their physical body, it impacts them spiritually to become more flexible as well, mentally and emotionally to be more flexible. So that might be a message for somebody to get into yoga. It's probably a message for me to like start back doing it. but. Um, like the number five, when you think about change. So when they got off of that plane, everything had changed. Everybody, one of the girls, her nigga was with her best friend. She couldn't even go back to that relationship if she wanted to. She had no choice but to accept things for the way that they was. And so that is where we are in our journey is acceptance. And right now we're kind of like basically in that part of that plane where we're in a divine consciousness. We're constantly receiving downloads. We're getting, we're going through all these changes. And when it stops, when we get into our new reality, everything around you, these people are now just going to be starting to see their own changes. They're only, they're going to still be where you was when you get to your new reality. 
And it's up to us now to have acceptance for the people around us. And that's what's even more going to allow our, our dreams to manifest because of the acceptance. I know I can't change this. I need to move around this energy. I need to get away from this energy. I need to go towards this energy. We have to be extremely intuitive. And that's what we're learning right now is to listen to ourselves. Like today when me and my girlfriend went out, before we left the house, um, we said we was gonna get hibachi. And it's one place called Kobe that I used to go to all the time and it was super good. But then we noticed the other day is this place right by Max's Taekwondo. And um, we was like, that might be good. And Cherry was like, I was like, where you wanna go um, to? And she was like, you wanna go to the one by Kroger or you wanna go? And I was like, oh, or do you wanna go to Kobe? I said, do you want to go to Kobe? But she said, do you want to go to the one by Kroger? And then she was like, okay, let's go to Kobe. And then the food was so trash, y'all. And it was like, when we got there, I was like, that probably was your intuition, Sherry, like telling us to go to the other spot. Because that was like her first thought was like, you want to go to the one by Kroger? Yeah. And then it's like so easily we can be led astray or distracted by other people in our reality if we don't listen to ourselves first. That's like what goes back to the conversation just about the body hygiene of like doing what feels good to you type of thing. Or just like there being some type of brainwashing like other people around you, they're going to encourage you to do the thing that is going to be most convenient for them with you in their life. If, unless they're on the level of consciousness where they can have acceptance for where you are and just be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like I'm starting to see myself being so different. Like the advice I used to give to my friends, I used to be getting all in it. Like you should do this, you should do that, blah, blah, blah. And now I ask them, what do you want to do? All I got is these. This can work for me. Take it upstairs. What is that you have a tattoo of right there? I feel like it, that's the second time you kind of like. Where? Stand. On my side? Uh-huh. So it is a tattoo of Carter. Well, it says his name and I have a butterfly right here. And then it's like a butterfly on the back. Oh, that's crazy. I literally was just making prints for Eva's room with butterflies on it. Yeah. Hmm. So that's like a, just a, a animal totem a, a transformation right there. Really crazy. Yeah, because during that time I had just had Carter. I was still in my wild kick it phase and I was dealing with a young man and he had totally pissed me off. And my cousin at the time we was hanging out. She was like, you want to go get tattoos? And she paid for me to get this tattoo. And it just represented the transformation that I had undergone when he came into my life. Mm -hmm. That's dope. And then just to reflect on where you are now, too, and even reflect on where Carter is now. Like, wow. Yeah. That's so insane. I was thinking um, I had this animal totem video and it has butterflies in it. And like in my animal totem videos, I don't just talk about like the spiritual messages. I talk about the actual animal, like their living habits, their eating habits, their life cycle. And like butterflies have a really short lifespan. And when we go on through these changes like this, where we're like so connected to divine consciousness, it's like mm -hmm. it feels like we're living a lot of lives in a short amount of time like a butterfly like butterflies they have i think they have either four or five i want to say they have five stages and it's like each one of them have their own little time that they have to be in that stage but their life cycle was real short like some butterflies don't last more than two weeks so that is where we looking at our growth right now, where it's like wow. every two weeks it's another lesson every two so, weeks it's another opportunity for growth that's three cards away from the past life. <laughs> and wow. this is one of my favorite cards. When you guys see it like in person, one, it's very two, dope. Three, four. Yeah, five stages. That's the five stages on the card. And it's crazy because there's five letters in a word. This is dope. And I love, I resonate with the butterfly. So mm -hmm. that's dope as fuck. But that's the calling. So it's talking about that you're, when you're being called to change, like you said, it don't matter if it's an hour, bitch, you got, you gotta, you gotta transform. 
<laughs> I get in there. It's so crazy too, because when you get to a certain level where you just know, it's not not even a mental knowing. It's in your body. You feel the energy of you have to lean into that to whatever it is. So like you could be dead ass like that other day when my kid's dad came over here and um, we was having a disagreement about my son and the old me would have did some weird, crazy shit. I would have been matching his energy, like kind of being raw or whatever. But the new me, I was like my girlfriend described it is that I softened myself. And what I did was I transmuted my energy so that I could de-escalate the situation. And it was intuitive. I didn't think about it. It happened. I didn't realize that I was even doing that until after the fact. And she told me that. And that is that is the what it really looks like to have the change in your life. If right there in your moment, you feel the energy and you lean into it. Because it's there. You got the different sides of yourself. It's like going to those to the, those two energies again, those two paths. What are you about yeah. to choose right now in the moment? Not after you have self-reflection and then you say, oh, next time I'm going to do this. Right now, what you about to do? And it's not about thinking about what you're going to do. It's about feeling that energy and saying, I could feel my energy. And one of them is a little bit higher vibration than the other one. One of them is going to get me what I want. And the other one is going to keep me right where I am. Like if I would have started being as aggressive as him, we wouldn't have resolved nothing. Yeah. We just would have been in the same space. But the moment I changed my energy and was like, okay, well, you know what? I think that if we want to do that, then let's go ahead and try it type of thing. Like I was more open and flexible. Girl, the situation changed so quick. And I do want to just add to this that, you know, a lot of you guys could be going through a situation where you have to change how you've been responding. Mm -hmm. You've been matching energy. You have been rocking the cradle, rocking the boat. <laughs> shaking the table. <laughs> okay, shaking the tables. And, and spirit is saying, where has that gotten you? You know what I'm saying? So when you change your energy and then the first card of the whole deck is first time, this is you guys needing to step into this new uncharted territory where you realize that the gift of being calm is going to get you through that storm. Mm. Sometimes you have to be the calmness because everything else around you is going crazy. And that's not even specific to a situation where there's something escalating. That's specific to life in general where you mm -hmm. like... This is really hard. I don't have the money for this this week. My doctor just pissed me off. I can't get something that I need to get. My kids are arguing. Those are the moments where you have to ground yourself and be like, I'm stepping through this portal, this new version of me. And that is what opportunities of growth look like in yeah. everyday situations. It's not always some big ass tower mo moment that's like, you don't have no choice but to do, do this and that. It's Ooh. the everyday situations of what am I choosing with my behaviors and my thoughts. And this is very beautiful because the cards are aligning with what you're saying. Um, with you, for the first time, choosing to act a certain way, handle the situation differently, that's you traveling out of the state of mind that you used to operate in. Oh, my In God. the past. And then right? feeling that karma the past life energies that you don't know you could have been in a hundred past li p lives already and you just now got this less you j it's just now clicking wow. yeah you've been trying to get this for so long listen i told i when i started getting to my spirituality and the shit started hitting the fan i was like this is the last time i'm doing this yeah i'm about to get all these lessons when i start realizing that this shit is a game i was like i'm about to do i'm about to grow Cause I'm not doing this no more. I'm tired. I'm tired of being in this physical reality. Going through the same shit. Yeah. Each and every time. Each and every time. Every time. Like when you really start to pick up on your past life energy, rather you somebody that have dreams about it, rather you just somebody who have channeled messages about you, whatever, however you connect with your past life, when it finally hits you, you feel a little bit dense. Like, I can't believe it took me this long to learn this. 
I've been really going through these cycles for a long time. But then at the same time, you should be present and also have grace for yourself, send love to the past versions of yourself because you don't know what they was going through. OK, one time I had a dream and I was in the past life and it was it's in a lot of my past lives. Max is there and my sister is there, but they be different people to me in different past lives. In this specific past life, we was literally like in Egyptian times. And this was the time where they was taking all the baby boys. You know, when they took all the sons and they killed them. Yeah. I am i can't tell y'all what where that happened in the Bible. But if you watch this movie, Prince of Egypt, this is what happened in Prince of Egypt. And it's a, a child movie. So you might, might feel called to watch that or something. I don't know. But they, for whatever reason, the dude that was the king at the time, he said, I'm about to you know, take something from y'all because I my I lost my son. So he killed all the sons throughout the town. And whoever basically marked their door with the blood of Christ or something, then they wasn't going to get their baby taken. For whatever reason in that lifetime, I was not with the blood of Christ. And I probably still ain't with that nigga. I'm going to be honest with you. So I was like, I'm not doing that. And when they came to take my baby, I was like losing it and I lost it to the point that I had two more kids in this lifetime and I spent my whole life missing my first son that I missed out on my whole life. Wow. Yeah, it was deep as fuck. Like when it was a lot of reflection about that because the first reflection was me losing Max so many times, so many times. And before he was born, when I was pregnant with him, I had a dream and it was like the devil whispered in my ear and said that he was going to have my son. And so that even was a reflection to me. Like there is some karmic energy that want my son, but for so many lifetimes, what is this? And then on top of the abandonment issues that I still have to this day, it's like I have a very hard time losing stuff or accepting that life has changed. Like in that lifetime, if I would have accepted that I lost my son and just made peace with that, I could have went on and enjoyed the lives of my two other children and been still happy. But I just decided to just live in the grief of losing him to the fact that I didn't have good relationships with my other kids. You know, it was sad to see. I was like, damn. Wow. I was like, this is insane. Yeah, it's insane. Because the reading that's what y'all was doing earlier, girl, it was past it was a past life reading. Wow. And so when I was writing a note I made a mistake. I was supposed to write past life, but I wrote last life. So something about his last life was very significant. They just popped too big. Ready? Wow. Didn't it hurt? Carter just got his ears pierced by his dad. That was fast. You what see what I'm saying? Just all type of shit. Like, what happened? It's been 15 minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. He got on his masculine side. He's no. getting his identity together. That's another thing. This How is the feminine the side. He got it on his feminine side. And what was I just talking about the, the flame reading? That's so interesting. So interesting. You know, um, I didn't finish the flame reading. I kind of want to jump back on that just a little bit. The one thing that really stood out to me more than anything was that the smoke was so black and it was so dense. And that's really significant of like low vibrational energies and also like toxic habits that we're sitting in. And listen to me, um, I'm not judgmental. So please don't think when I say certain habits is toxic. We was talking about this this week on the podcast. Like, go back and listen to this week's episode if you haven't already, if I got time. But we was talking about um, shit, not a, not the thought trying to leave my mind. I hate when that happens. 
we was talking about that certain stuff is low vibrational, high vibrational. We were talking about the new Drake album. And it was like, Cherry is all in. She been bumping this shit ever since it came out. Bro, eyes. <laughs> and I just, I'm never fucking with Drake again because he does things that I feel like are, are very to our community. Devilish. He is a demon to the community. He he's terrible. He's terrible. And he is um, also an October Scorpio, by the way. They're different. They different. Okay. They're very different. They are very manipulative people on a low vibration. And the thing is that we have to be able to recognize the energies around us. And it's not because they're a Scorpio. It's not because they're a Leo. It's because they're in a low vibration. We was talking about astrology this week on the episode. So um, it's like certain stuff might be a low vibration to one person and it might put another person on a high vibration. So that's why we have to like not be judgmental or in other people's business to how it is that they try they choose to cope through life or whatever because some things are good for them like for one person smoking weed could be detrimental to them to the fact that all they do is lay around but another person smoking weed could be stimulating to their mind and get their creative juices flowing and it's part of their process and they channel messages better so you can't say smoking weed is low vibrational it depends on who is using it what their vibration is yeah but the black smoke really indicated that there's a lot of people either around us or that are going to be contacting us that are going to be on a low vibration. And that's where we kind of go back to the other conversation we was having is that you have to be choosing on how you choose to react and participate where your energy is going. I You use way less energy when you just tell somebody, OK, you got it. Like not arguing your point of view or your belief or whatever it is. Like, um, I feel like this is specifically relationship, and I feel like it specifically has to do with ex partners. Like, when I was um channeling the message, when I started writing, all I was about to put was X X X, like the word E X E X E X, and then in Instead, I wrote Case of the X by Maya, the song. You remember the Case of the X? And they'd be like, what you going to do when she wants you back? What you going to do when you can't? You know what I'm talking about? Wow. So I don't know. I feel like there's a message in that song for somebody. And um, if it's a situation like that, you cannot control another person. You have to let people make their own choices. And if they don't choose you, you better choose yourself. That's all I'm going to say about that. But the one thing you got to do is protect yourself right now, whether that looks like, oh, I'm going on a social media break or I'm going on a break where I just talk to people less that I'm just sitting with my own energies. Um, if you put putting salt outside your door, if you're doing spiritual protection, whatever it is, wearing crystals, you need protection right now. Like that's on period. And you need to avoid those people that are in those low vibrations that are going to bring you back to your past self. They can't make you do nothing. They can't make you act crazy or get rowdy. That is a choice on your own self that you choosing to do when the other choice is to just say whatever. Okay, hang up the phone. Stop talking to them. Um, the other song I channeled this week was Impatient by Jeremiah. And this is on, it's also a, um, a, a love message. When I first seen it, I was thinking impatient. Like right now we being impatient for things to happen on the time and that we want it to happen. But when you listen to the song, it's about him being impatient, like he can't wait to be with this girl. So I feel like there's two messages in that song, depending on where you are in your journey and what it is that what message you need to hear right now. It's like, are you feeling like you being a little bit impatient towards your goals or do are you somebody who there's energies coming towards you right now who feel like that. They can't wait to see you again. They can't wait to hear your voice again. They feel impatient. They might even be a little bit codependent in their mannerisms, like calling you what you feel like is too much, being on you too much. 
And maybe you should just be open to those opportunities and being flexible to be in a different version of yourself where you would normally be like, I'm not really a lovey-dovey person. Maybe you should be lovey-dovey. Maybe you should lean into that feminine energy of receiving that love instead of being into the masculine energy and saying like, yeah, I'm just not a touchy-feely person, you know? Yeah. Where are the kids this <laughs> week? This is my week. I ain't got no kids, so I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> my kids would have been right here arguing. Mom, mom. I called yesterday to talk to Eva, and she was like, uh, Christine answered the phone and she was like, um, well, right now they might be a little bit grumpy because they got their screen time taken because they got into a fight on the bus and we don't really know whose fault it was. So both of, both of them got their screen took. And first Eva get on the phone and she's like, I didn't do anything. And I was like, called her out like, Eva, this is you and me here. You know, I know what you be on. It's not just Max. So tell me what happened. She told me what happened. And then so when I wanted to talk to Max about it, he didn't even want to talk. <laughs> oh my god. This is such a Sagittarius for you. He needs to get he needs to sit with his own energy like that, period. He didn't even want to talk about it. Wow. He didn't hear nothing I had to say. <laughs> wow. And I respected his boundaries. Okay. For y'all being the actual energy, this yo energy that you impatient. Yeah. to see them to talk to them and they like um i'm gonna need you to chill out just a little bit sometimes that can be scary when you want somebody a lot you know what i mean like it could be overwhelming for somebody to love you so much if for a long time you never really had intentional or genuine love like that could be scary to people so like just Think about, like, have compassion for where other people is and that they journey that they might not be totally able to receive all of what you have to give. And you can either say, well, if they can't receive this and they don't deserve it or be patient with them while they're learning to love themselves and learning to love you as well. Like, it don't have to be all or nothing. It's about compromise. Yeah. It's a lot of babies, though. I keep saying that. It's a lot of babies. It's Your hat is like giving me baby girl. Like, I feel like this is a message to me. One of my friends is waiting until they baby born to find out what it is. Okay. Yeah, but I feel like now I know. <laughs> yeah. Lots of babies. Maybe you pregnant, whoever watching this. Oh, wow. This is so crazy. So I just split the deck on the Moonology Oracle. I don't know. Can y'all see this? Because I'm like in the small screen. It has the lion. First of all, it's a full moon in Leo. So that's all of the Leo energy. OK, you're getting actually it's the opposite, because if it's a full moon, then it's like totally blocking the sun. So it's it's energy. The Leo energy turned down. OK, and what the card says is don't let pride get in your way. So I feel like that's definitely connected to just, you know. What I was just saying. Um, You know, with that being the Leo energy it's like when you feel like you need to pull back your energy from some somebody else or whatever, or if it's like if you feel like you have a lot of energy to give somebody else and they're not ready to receive that. If you don't give that energy back to yourself, you got to be like the Leo. Put that sunshine on you like, you know, if somebody don't want you, they don't want you. That's OK. Just accept it and love yourself more. Give whatever energy that you had to give to them, give it back to yourself. It's like a lot of hot sh heart chakra vibes. Like, I feel like a lot of heart healing going on. Yeah. I feel like all the way I, I don't know. I really wanted to kind of talk about the new moon is coming up. It's a new moon in Sagittarius coming up on, I, what was it? Was it December 8th? I thought I had wrote that down. I, I don't know when when it come up but the new moon there's a lot of um 
there's a lot of stagnant energy clearing up. I feel like by the time of the new moon, you're going to already feel like you're in a new reality. Based on who you're choosing to be right now. Because like, you know, like we living in the manifestation right now in the present moment. But yeah. then when we get into our next present moments, it was based off of what we was doing in the past. So like you kind of really is just living in the results of your past. Like you kind of living in the past, even though you think you're in a future moment. It's like right now what we doing is contributing to the next thing that we do. And so in two weeks by now, it's not going to be the energy of those two weeks. It's going to be the energy of what our choices was from the last two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's another thing that helped remind you to just be present right now and do what you can right now. Because that's like what's creating and manifesting your next, your next two weeks. What you got? That is just like, girl, this is a lot. This is a lot. It's always a lot, though. I feel like this is such a good message, though. I'm really glad that we finally got to do this together. When I read the cinnamon, like the first thing is I don't normally read cinnamon specifically for money or anything, even though it do manifest money, but it was like sparking up. It was like sparking up like a new flame. So I feel like what whatever we're doing is like the thing that's going to pop off is something new. It's going to be a whole new energy. Um, but I also felt intuitively from this message because the sound audibly of the sparking, it sounded like when you ha having a phone call and it start getting disconnected, like, you know, when a phone be crackly, yeah, that's what it, what it sounded like to me. And I felt intuitively like it's, it's some type of mystery connection that is going to be coming back around in a sense and that doesn't mean that it have to be romantic so like don't make it be something that is not like i know some people they really want love in their life so that's what they do but that's why i don't read like just love energies you know because it's like how are you perceiving this energy and what's the reality of it if you don't have no prospects at all it is not a love message <laughs> like stop you right. nobody's calling you like not to be funny but it's like focus your energy where spirit is telling you to be at and right now a relationship is not it so if you're somebody who is looking for love or you like really want that in your life or you feel like that's the thing that's missing you just haven't it's not that you don't have no self-love is that you're not fully living in that self-love or else you will be feeling totally fine being single you want it so bad because you don't need it. <laughs> you need you right now. But being with another person is just going to be a distraction to your to your progress. Yeah. I also feel like somebody's breaking up. About damn time. <laughs> For some people, it was just it was time. It was that time. And, and and it's just like you know the contemplation of it all led you to this conclusion <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that is a fact that is so funny somebody's definitely breaking up though it's giving taylor swift we are never ever ever so and maybe Maybe y'all already broke up and you finally came to the conclusion, like you finally accepted it. Y'all ain't never getting back together. Like, uh-uh, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't meant to be in this lifetime. It just is what it is. Yeah, it's a done deal. You know what I really hate is when you have like a real spiritual connection with somebody and no matter how long you've been broken up with them, you can still feel their energy. That yeah. shit really pisses me off. Yeah. Because it's confusing. And it stresses me out because then in my mind, I start to think, are they about to call me? Because I can feel their energy. And sometimes you feel somebody energy and maybe they just thinking about you or I don't know what it is, but I really hate that feeling. And then it just makes me want to be like, let me make sure this nigga's blocked. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I hate that. I hate that. You know, you got to listen to your feelings. You are not crazy. If you feel it, it's probably true. They probably yeah. low-key obsessed with you. I don't know. On some they you, they send energy, energy signals and you can just, yeah. just picking up on that shit. Mm-hmm. I don't care what nobody say. People be trying to act like it, like you're crazy. Like, oh, you wanted to have a dream about that person. So you dreamt about that person. Like, no, baby. And to me, everything is spiritual. They're literally telepathically trying to reach out to you and give you a message because they don't have the boss to call you. Like that be, that's what it be. And I don't care. Maybe that's not your case. Cause with what you believe is true. I also really believe that, but I really think so. But it's crazy though, because you pulled the full moon card, which is not letting your pride get in the way. And that's all it be. Mm-hmm. Their pride gets in the way of them actually being able to physically communicate so it's just left in that the metaphysical realm. Yeah, and we be all up there. So it's just and like the energy oh. be stirring because they probably be thinking about it so much. What mm-hmm. you give your energy to, it grows. So even it's not, even though it doesn't come out in a physical manifestation, if you're dealing with somebody and they are intuitive like that, or they're literally in the cloud, they're in the divine consciousness, they're getting those messages. They are. I can feel your energy, even if I, even if it's not a clear message, because you probably can't make up your mind about what you want. I can at least feel your energy pulling on me. Like, stop thinking about me. Yeah. I hate that because now I'm thinking about you. And I don't really like to go there if I don't have to, because at the same time, it be spaces that I haven't healed yet that's not safe for me to be in. You know what I mean? I don't need to be thinking about what happened when this was that because it's either going to do two things. I'm going to get mad or then I'm going to be thinking like, maybe I miss it. Well, you don't. You literally don't. You ain't there for a reason. It ain't nothing to be missing. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to miss it, like, but don't get too crazy on the missing side because then next thing you call it them. Yeah. The other card that I pulled out is literally the opposite energy, the new moon in Leo. And it say, confidence is the key to your success. I needed to hear that. Breaking your confidence really do, um, will have you not going after your dreams and goals and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's another thing why you have to be with your people, because if you surround about the wrong people, if you surround about those low vibrational energies, they're going to convince you of whatever it is that you think can't happen for you. They gonna be like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think you will make it either. No, just imagine I wore this hat and my stepmom said that this looks like a bonnet. But everywhere I go, I get so many compliments. So it's like if I relied on what this person told me and not you be believe confident. It? Yes. So it's just interesting. Like, yes, you have to be confident. Me, for me, I'm just confident in my ability to crochet. Mm-hmm. But if I was unconfident in like what I did, I would let that fucking stop me. This would be the only hat I made. I wouldn't even be wearing it. Yeah, because I'm telling you, as soon as I seen it, I knew it was a money maker. I felt the energy off the hat. I was like, I love it. I was like, this is so cute. <laughs> and she had like other colors too. I was like, this is so cute. Y'all better like get a custom order with my friend because she do not play when it comes to the crochet. And we'll have to tag your crochet channel in the description box because she got some videos of there of her crochet. And it's like I can't crochet, but it's extremely therapeutic to watch. Like yeah, like I, a I had an idea just watching that I was gonna be crochet ASMR, and I was just gonna. <laughs> Just have a video of me talking and just visually, the visual is just me crocheting. Literally. And I'll just I spit out it. some good affirmations. I love it. Let me make your visuals for the channel. Hey, but this is so, I'm, I'm really happy. I like the way that you've been explaining this. Um, What do you feel? Okay, so you pulled three full moon cards. Now we pull a, 
a new moon and a full moon. Okay. Well, to, well, because you got you pulled the full moon in Leo, then you pulled the new moon in Sag, and then you pulled the new moon in Leo. Oh, I pulled a new moon in Sag. Yeah. So full. Oh, never mind. Sorry, you was just talking about it. My bad. I'm, oh. I'm here writing notes. Okay. Oh yeah, that's the new one. That's, that's the next new moon. Okay. So I think um, I was just I had just posted this on the I've Got Time Instagram page, but I'm trying to see which cycle moon cycle are we in right now, and then that tells you like what you should be doing right now to prepare basically for the next two weeks or the next full moon. Um, and it's crazy though because you pulled two cards: the full moon in Leo, and then you pulled the new moon in Leo. Mm -hmm. Both is like eight. Eight, eight house energy. Well, you know, it's the eighth. Ain't it the eighth month? It is the eighth month. Yeah. Okay. So this eighth. So it's two eights flipped. That's crazy. So full moon is like getting that understanding of where you are as far as your level of confidence or courage or ego, and then the new moon is just being confident and like knowing who you are and being bold and just. Being with the shit, I guess. Literally. Mm. He says the current moon cycle for today is a waning crescent. So it says the waning crescent is prepare mentally and physically. And then the next moon phase after that is the balsamic and is be mindful and patient. And then we get to the new moon, which means to set your monthly intentions. So right now where we are, we should be preparing mentally and physically. So, you know, that means is the universe is going to give us opportunities to do that, which means that we're going to be feeling more tired because we need the rest. Yeah. Um, so that also mean that we need to release those habits of overthinking and anytime we feel ourselves getting lost too much in thought or like what i i don't know what i call it but i literally been doing it since i was a kid and i would just go to another reality real quick as a coping mechanism and now it's at this point that i'm just realizing that i've done it for so long where i'm dissociating and it's like if i have a lot of stress or something going on i'll literally just start dissociating a lot to get out of the present moment so if you do that, if you feel those energies to like pull away from the present moment, just try like some breath work or like something that's some form of meditation, whatever that is to you. Like I'm a clip a video here when I go back and add, it's like a video that says, what is meditation? Meditation could be anything like for a row. Meditation is a crocheting for me. I, I'm like, I got ADHD. I got to do a lot of different stuff or else I'm going to get bored. So I'll be doing all kinds of shit. Yesterday I was um, making yep. prints and that really just helped me be present in the moment in a creative space. But at the same time, I was, um, I was meditating. You know, I was just giving myself a mental break from always thinking about shit. The only thing I was thinking on and focused on was making those prints. So you got to find your thing. What's my thing that's going to keep me in this present moment? And make sure you get some rest because, girl, when this new moon comes and stuff, that energy start popping off on that new thing, whatever it is, y'all. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting, girl? Riley been seeing spirits. Like, she's seeing things more vividly. Like, Today, I was sitting there, girl, I saw something run past real quick. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's going on? I'm not one to always see spirits. I'm not, I was never that type. So this is new for me. Mm -hmm. She is so gifted. She is so tuned in. Wow. Drink your water and mind your business. <laughs> Period. I got mine right here. That is so funny. Last week, this is the episode for this week, the intention I week. At the end of every episode on the podcast, we set an intention and we say, what are you making time for this week? Yeah. And I said I was making time to mind my goddamn business. <laughs> What's up? What's up? That was a hard one, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm a town boy sometimes. All right, y'all. So, what else? Any more messages? I think I feel like I said what I need to say. What you feel like? Yeah. I just do feel like this is a... I'm ready to wrap it up, girl. I'm ready. You know what? I'm ready for the new year. Girl. Skip new skip Thanksgiving. Let's skip Christmas. And let's just go straight to New Year. I feel the same way. I'm like, honestly, 2022 is so old to me because I've been in 2023 since like July. I'm not gonna wow. lie. Energetically, energetically I'm I'm like, get me out of this year. Physically, you are reading I'm, my mind. I was just about to bring up like who all feels like they're already in 2023. Apparently you do. <laughs> That's beautiful though, because again, remember you were the one that brought up the whole time travel. So, okay, so let me tell you this though. So remember how the one day you did my eight life path reading mm -hmm. and I was telling you, I'm like, I bet you your next car is gonna be an eight car. And it literally was. It literally was. When you talk to me about time travel, I think about the number eight and I think about how you jump through one hoop, like so you go in through one hoop and then you come out through the other hoop. That's like, and then remember I kept telling you about, you know, when I took a trip before, like when I did like acid and I was like time traveling, like literally my experience to me, what I noticed about when I took a trip was that whatever time I started, I started at like eight at night. At some point time got lost. And when I looked at the time again, it was like, three in the morning mm -hmm. so that time shit is really crazy it's crazy as fuck i feel like you giving me that visual right now of the actual infinity sign you know i feel like that's like what time travel really is is a constant flow of energy it's not one line and it's like in 1990 and 2003 it's like a constant flow of energy and it's just like energetically where we might be pulled to I'm, I might be energetically in fucking 2050 or some shit. And it's just because that's where the energy is flowing. And I just want to say, in the flow state. I am connected to celebrities somehow. So RP take off because he, obviously, I guess their newest album was Infinity Links. Something Infinity Links, which I thought was like, you know, crazy. But my favorite song by Takeoff, which I didn't know was just his song, is called um, Me Last Memory. Mm. And that song is just like, so somebody may need to listen to that. Listen to Takeoff, Last Memory, y'all. And it's just so crazy because he's in like a space suit. If you, if you Google it on YouTube, um, if you look it up on like Apple, he's on a rocket. Mm. But I just feel like the symbolism is what makes me want to stay away from social media because it's just it's too much for my heart. It's definitely a lot, like all of the message coming in at one time. And I feel like that's why we have to be present and know when certain messages ain't for us. And also when it's just the period where we need to keep ourselves for those messages. We're not always going to be seeing some shit on the back of a license plate or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you just got to be present in like the fact that yeah, I just I, I don't feel like that shit right now. She keep asking me in my surprise. Like, no. <laughs> he must be surprised, I feel like. And he wants you to have a reaction so he can have one. Like, Yes, I'm still on live. <laughs> I feel like that just really gave me the message, like how she came in upside down like that in the camera. It's like, that's how we gonna feel when we get out of this flow, when we get out of this energy cycle. It's gonna be like, she feels kind of upside down. Like you have to remind yourself to be grounded in who you are, what feels good to you, what you actually want, because it's gonna be really easy to go back into that past life. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. But also like have like a childlike sense of humor with the energy. 
have yeah. fun, you know, find you something me light about it, you know. Lean into it. Enjoy it. This is your life right now. You might as well fucking make it fun and enjoy it, like, for real. Yeah. You better so, be around yeah. the people that make you feel happy because that's all that you can do. <laughs> for real. You know what we should do our next live? We should talk to parents who are um who have children with like chronic illnesses mm. and kind of give them some spiritual advice on like how we manage and deal during these times. That's a great idea. Because boy oh boy, on top of regular life stuff to be grounded and not be yeah. worried. And I think there's a spiritual aspect to it because just between me and you, I kind of feel like we're special because we have children that need special attention. Mm -hmm. So that's like one way that you know that you're special because it's like God gave you a purpose for sure. Like they said, you can let the world be a distraction or you can distract yourself with this, learn what you need to learn. You know, sometimes if you are a mom, it's not that you're a homebody. It's that you need to be isolated. Oh, this needs to be your focus because you and your child have like a whole different path and it's very spiritual. That is you so gotta, You got to look at your situation. Like that. Um, how like my kids saved me. They saved me in the physical reality because I used to be so depressed that I wanted to like off myself. Now, yeah. when they gave me a purpose, and the purpose was to have unconditional love. It wasn't even nothing that I could do for them or what I could buy them. It was like my purpose was to love them. And the reflection of the, my love for them taught me how to love myself. I said yeah. this the other day. I was talking to um, Sherry and I was talking to my friend Stevie. And I said, or no, no, no. I was talking to my friend Melissa. And I said that. If it wasn't for my kids, I would still be in my marriage. And because that I didn't have no self-love. It was ever actually the Leo, of course. Mm -hmm. You better put yourself first, mom. And she didn't teach me in words. She taught me in her actions. She taught me in her natural self, the things that we be pushing down on kids and telling them not to be and to do other stuff and to fall in line with uh, what people have been doing for the last 40 years or whatever. She taught me to love myself and to value myself. And even just the reflection of, damn, I don't want my kids being in a relationship like this. I don't want them thinking that this is what love looks like. Like my kids really saved me, but they also really saved me. Like they teach me how to have fun. They teach me how to enjoy my moments, how to be present, how to just chill out. Yeah. And it, it's we all might not be moms for the same reason, but there's definitely a reason for it. They chose you and you chose them in this lifetime or however many lifetimes. If y'all like me and Max, we keep coming back to each other like we got to do this together. Yeah. Only you. Only you can do it. I'm All right, girl, you are crazy. Yeah, I got a, I got a meeting in like 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I definitely enjoy doing this live with you. Yeah, it was great. It was really fulfilling and I can't wait to watch it back. I'm going to wait till I get me a few minutes because, you know, this was kind of a heavy topic. It's like when you channeling, you just be like, blah, 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 blah. But when you have to reflect on your own energies and how this message be for us too, like we're reading ourselves at the same time and it'd be like, damn girl. Yeah. So I had so much fun. And I mean, always this, this our regular degler anyways y'all we're just like sharing we, this with y'all we're letting y'all in on our conversation you know? yeah. i love you so much I enjoy your you night too. hug those kids for me i will and i'll see you soon, see you soon. <laughs> all right girl bye um as always
Thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it or if you even got one message out of it. it um, subscribe to my channel and click the description box so you can subscribe to Rose's channel, her um, spiritual channel, and also her channel that she does crochet on. You can find her and book a reading with her or you can... Um, book her for a custom crochet item. So I am sending you guys so much love, so much peace. Bye.